Let's start, uh, Srikantan Manoj. So I'm just sharing my screen. Sure. So yesterday, I think uh, we have discussed about the Python setup and environment setup settings and how to install and how to set up environment variables to use a Python from anywhere in the system. Okay. And as part of that, uh, we also discussed about the basic syntax of Python because that is where every developer is going to start uh, writing a program. So hence we have discussed what is the basic syntax. So the basic syntax, so we were discussed about indentation. So because that is uh, what the basic, you know, the thumb rule we should aware of before writing a program. So generally uh, indentation is nothing but giving a white space. So when you write a program in Python, so based on that, it is going to execute your Python program. So if you're not missing, or if you are missing anything uh, to give a white space uh, in the Python program, that is nothing but indentation. It is going to end up your program by throwing indentation error. So, and also we talk about comments. So uh, like uh, if you want to commit a single line, so basically comments are required to document your program. So generally, if you look at any programming language, uh, comments are required for each and every method and also each and every class and uh, object, because that is only the main part uh, to define the code and help us others to understand the code. So by looking at the comment, so we can easily understand the intention of every line that we have written for the program. So today we will see, so what are all the editors? So we are going to use it as part of Python program. So also we have seen uh, two of the editors in the Python program, which are coming as part of inbuilt, uh, interactive, you know, interpreter mode prompt and another one is script file editor. So those are having some, yeah, those are having some pros and cons and uh, so each, I mean, every developer is looking for a different editor and where it is having different features uh, and also it is having IntelliSense feature and developer no need to remember or, you know, aware of everything in the Python. When you type something, it is going to give you the syntax. Let's, let's talk about the editors in the today's session. So as I said, Python is the most popular programming language. So so developers aspiring to uh, work in emerging technologies such as artificial intelligence and machine learning. So they wanted to uh, understand like what are all the libraries are supporting in artificial intelligence and machine learning and need to know Python to get started actually using this kind of editors. So one of the most, uh, you, know, the, uh, you know, the popular editors, so we have in the industry uh, are like one is a Visual Studio. So you are all seeing my screen? So. Yes. Yeah. Visual Studio Code. And another one is PyChar. And third one is Eclipse. So these are the main editors which inbuilt uh, provide intelligence facility for any programming language, not only for Python, so generally, if you look at Visual Studio Code, so this is basically belongs to Microsoft. So where you have all you know the plugins and install softwares, you directly go and open this Visual Studio Code, and you can write any programming language, not only for uh, Python. If you wanted to write HTML, you can write it, write HTML, and you can write JavaScript, and you can write .NET, and you can write C or C++, any programming language. By specifying extension, you can start writing a program using Visual Studio Code. Yes. So the latest version of uh, Visual Studio uh, Code was 1.58. This is the latest version. Latest version of Visual Studio Code was 1.5. And official website 
to download the software was https colon visual studio dot com slash download so this is the official website and you just go to this website visit this website and you can download visual studio code in a fraction of seconds it, it doesn't take much time because it is lesser weight and it is having um, you know the mb size and you can download into your system and you can install it and it is having as i said you know good features so it is allowing users or developers to write any programming language like python html dot net java etc so hence it is more popular nowadays and everyone is looking for this a uh, plugin and editor to install and start writing of program because uh, it is having those many features so uh, let us jump into this and see like what are all the features it has having i'm just copying this website whatever website they are provided and going there and see like what it is having so i'm just opening this and navigating to this website so it is giving like this so this is where this website providing uh, you know the binary files setup files for installing into different platforms like your windows unix mac and those and ubuntu and etc etc platforms so as we are working in windows you just go to here windows 7 and 8 and 10 and click on here it is going to give you the installer setup file and when i click on here it is going to going to here and it is explaining about the visual studio code like how it is going to work and what are all the top extensions it is supporting so as i said like you know it is allowing user to uh, create or uh, write different programs python c++ jupyter and other c sharp so there are so many extensions in the marketplace and you just go and install it using user studio code and use it so it's already installed and you go and see like it the size of this plugin or editor it is almost you know mb size it, it it doesn't take much space even so i'm just clicking on this it seems still long ago. If I keep, if I if I look at here, it is seventy six point seven MB. That is how that is how it is taking space in your system. And when you click, these are all executable files, so no need to worry about like this is something installer or set up file, and it is it requires some dependency kind of etc cetera, etc. Cetera. You know the prerequisites. It it doesn't require any prerequisite. So but. Windows operating should be a uh, seven version and later versions. And you just click on Visual Studio EXE, it is going to install. So as I already installed it, I'm just going to open directly. So this is where <coughs> the <coughs> sorry, this is where it is <coughs> coming like that. First look. Sorry, just a moment. Sorry guys. So this is what uh, the initial, uh, you know, the uh, screen appearing when you open editor here. I think Manoj knows like yesterday, this is the program we have written as part of a demo to understand like how it is going to execute it. Let's close this. And come here, uh, I think. Uh, so what is that? View. Let's close this.
closed folder. So as I already opened it, hence it is uh, showing the particular file. But initially when you uh, install it and open it, it is going to display as like this. It is the initial look and appearance. If you look at here, it is going to give some options like, uh, like a start. So how to start some options it is giving it. And coming to the next section, it is saying about recently opened files and other options you can see here in the menu bar and as like uh, other, you know, the uh, GUI tools, how they are giving options for the uh, user or developer. So these are all the normal options. You can see like order, Excel or PowerPoint and Notepad and opening a file and opening in window and, and you know, the open fold workspace or recently files, all these options are normal. You go and check it and edit option again, sort all the, you know, undo and redo and cut copy and selection, view, go, run, terminal. So terminal is nothing but, you know, like uh, where you are uh, running this particular program. Okay. So if you look at left side, we have different options. This is what explorer option where you can uh, explore things like, you know, opening a file and create a file. So let us click on this first. When I click on here, it is, you know, the uh, showing one of the panel here. This is where you can start creating of a folder or cloning of your repository. And let us say like, I wanted to uh, pull uh, some of my project files from GitHub or, you know, the uh, GitLab or Git or Bitbucket. These are the version control systems, right? So if you have a login to these, uh, uh, you know, the public repositories and you just clone those repositories here using this clone repository, and it is going to pull all your files into this particular path. And next time onwards, when you make a change and when you say pull, it is going to automatically push into your uh, no target a Git repository. So I'm just opening a folder here for now. So I'm going to open some folder. Let us say like a T drive, something, F drive. Uh, some training. I'm just opening here, this folder I'm opening right now. And when I open a file, it is going to display some folders existed in that particular, you know, the folder. So it listed out all the files and folders here and you can see and you can navigate from here itself. So no need to go anywhere. And going back any folder, all the files, what are all, all available files are uh, in that particular folder is going to show here. So this is what the option of explore. And coming to here, there are some options like, you know, new file or you no know, new folder and refresh. And this is what expand and collapse. So, so no need to go to file menu here itself. You just choose new file here. Let us say like when I click on new, it is uh, displaying as like this. So demo dot file like this. And it is adding to your folder here. It's collapsing here. So the file is being opened here in this right side. So actually I was created here in this folder. Okay. So this is the file actually. So based on the extension, it is going to add icon itself in the left side of your file. So remaining files are it seems PPT files and it is adding some different icon. It's not part of the programming uh, section. It is kind of, you know, application where you uh, create a files for presentation. So it doesn't re recognize the file, hence it is showing different icon. So let's delete this and go to a correct folder. Or you create a new folder here if you want. So here itself, I'm going to create a new folder here. Python demo. And then I have uh, my own folder. I'm just clicking on here. And in that folder, I'm creating my file demo.py. So when I create my folder and the file, it is going to display right side and it is ready. That means when you create a particular extension file, it is going to uh, display or pull that relevant editor here. Here I have created pi 
that means it's a python related file and so it is bringing all python stuff here let us say if i go and create another file here so even you have an option to create a file by selecting that folder and right click okay or you just go as usual new file i am creating you know the demo.html so i wanted to create a html file look at here when i create html it is bringing html kind of editor that means <clears throat> when i start writing html tags here it is going to give html syntax let us say html look at here it is showing me html when i uh, close my html tag it is going to automatically add in tag okay and similarly body it is telling me like body spelling is this this is what body is like that it is uh, displaying all intelligence features which relevant to that particular extension here so i have created html hence it is displaying html you go back to python let's say like print see here it is asking me give proper naming print when i open this bracket it is giving me the full syntax of python print function so that's how it is working this you know the editor visual studio code that means based on the extension file you are going to open it it is opening that relevant file editor here so if you look at here when i click on demo.html it is opening demo.html when i click on demo.py it is displaying demo.py i want to display both files simultaneously i wanted to see a side by side file this is demo.html and when i click on demo.py i want to display in the you know side beside of this demo.html if that is the case you need to double click here when you double click on the file it is going to display in the side tab that means multiple editors it can open it so like see uh, so initially i opened html if you single click on this next file normal it is replacing that open editor tab and displaying latest click uh, you know the file editor and again demo.html so if you want to open in different tab you need to double click when i double click on the file it is uh, keep i mean it is retain the old tab and it is opening new tab here this is how it is opening any number of times let us say i will create one more for demo.py and it is going to open it here so like that you can navigate okay this is all about explore that means exploring of your files and creating of the file and coming to here this is the search option so where you can search the content in the open folder here so you can search anything here just click on search it is going to give you the search text box and you type whatever you want you search it across the open folder and coming to the next one is a source control as i told you source control system so source control version at the git repository or git or bitbucket or gitlab or azure repository so nowadays the so git was taken by microsoft and it is you know integrated into microsoft azure devops so azure repository so whatever repository if you want to configure to your editor this is just for your coder just click on this so it is going to give you you know the two options here initialize repository and publish to github so you know github is in a universal you know the version control system so where everybody can store their files and important stuff into that github and it is available and visible to everyone and based on the permissions how the administrator person is giving it so like that if you want to keep your files into a github which is a cloud then you initialize or integrate here itself and you write start or you start writing programs here it is automatically pushed into uh, your cloud like you know github or bitbucket or different version control systems okay and how the file changes automatically sync to uh, my cloud git repository means here you have accounts here so you need to turn on settings here sync and before that you need to log in into the 
account here like uh, github accounts accounts should be there right so you need to log in into that and then you initialize repository here so that all files will display here and refer local path initially and when you uh, write something it is automatically synced to your uh, login repository which is there in the cloud so and coming to this next one this is debugging and run if you want to debug your file or if you want to see like how my compilation is happening to execute the program and you just select this run and debug option here and once you open your file here and when i click on run and debug it is going to start uh, executing my program line by line and uh, showing you know the variable values how values are assigning it to my variable and how the calculations and computation is happening before displaying on the screen so coming to the next one is this is something different option there in the later latest version actually it is not there in the earlier versions this is nothing but you know we just showed you called remote development that is remote explorer so as of now we have explored uh, files and folders from the local machine but when it comes to this option so if you want to connect to a remote machine that means uh, this is just for your code remote development allows you uh, use a container or remote machine or the windows subsystem for linux it's nothing but wsl is nothing but windows subsystems for linux so as full feature development environment so if you want to connect just click on here added distro it is going to display you know different environments here and whatever environment you wanted to connect it just select that ubuntu or in a system or whatever it is and that is going to come into your you know the uh, visual studio code part so i didn't try this you guys can try if you want it but anyway these are the uh, different options we have it if you want to use it you can use it otherwise you just leave it because we only require how to write a python program and how to execute it so these are the different kind of windows subsystems for linux and you can just connect to these systems and you start explore the files and folders and the lines of code there itself okay so coming back to here because this is something different topic and i'm not going to get into deeper here okay and coming to the next option here is this is what extensions that means what are all the extensions are installed now if you look at here after clicking here it is displaying me installed stuff here and this is recommended stuff okay if you want to such particular thing like let us say python when i type here so look how it looks like and get the stuff for me if you look at here it is telling me this python for vs code is there here this is so all the stuff is getting through a marketplace and uh, internet and it will display you all the plugins here so these are the plugins available for python and if you want install it you can install it and as part of visual studio code it will integrate into the studio editor so just click on here install option it is going to install it so here if you look at this install install this extension in all your synced visual studio code instances and like this so based on your purpose and the need choose your let us let us say like i wanted to install docker and when i type docker here and it is going to fetch me all this stuff so docker's uh, latest version is this and you go and install it and docker explorer docker linter so there are a lot of options here and you just search search for them and install it based on your requirement and look at recommended it is going to give some you know the recommended softwares and extensions basically docker this is where uh, another bunch word uh, you know the everyone is talking and discussing nowadays docker 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 so docker is nothing but it's a kind of container where you have images and you just run your image and you just run your container and you just use it instead of uh, depending on manual intervention let us say we want to set up a python yesterday i think we have took a lot of uh, 40 minutes so i don't want to quick manual intervention part just install or get the docker of python and clicking on that particular python docker it is going to install python software into your system that is where uh, nowadays uh, our devops concept comes in for automatic deployment and automatic process 
all are depending on docs and this is what about the extensions part and coming to this accounts like uh, so what account you have uh, logged in so as of now so far i did not log into any account here if you log in into any github or version control system account it is going to display the uh, account settings so where you just on the settings of uh, you know, the syncing part it is going to sync uh, the changing files into uh, the targeted source control system and coming to this last one is all about settings that means suppose if you want to see uh, the shortcuts of all you know different options available here and there is an option here keyboard shortcuts you can see all shortcuts here so i want to see a you know file menu shortcuts just type here file it is displaying a uh, file related shortcuts here in same way like run it is going to display you a run related shortcuts here and you still go here and if you want you can change your shortcut also so the, there is no no need in you know using already existing shortcuts still there is an option to change it and you you give your whatever shortcut you want to assign it to so called x uh, action or x operation here and just press uh, press enter it is going to assign it to your relevant action so like that you can see all shortcuts here in the one place and based on that no need to navigate to menu options and just use shortcut and write your program and run and debug and do whatever options you want so these are the some of the features i wanted to explain you because going forward we are going to use this editor and not other editors of course based on your wish you can use other editors as well by charm and eclipse so but people are why people are using this uh, visual studio code or compared to other also i am going to explain it here this is all about uh, visual studio code and coming to the pie chart so as i said this is also one of the uh, editor so where people are using more frequently uh, when you write uh, programs which relates to data science so this is this is also a uh, same process and you go to that particular website here if you look at this uh, the latest version of pycharm was latest version of pycharm yes Uh, i think 2021 point 1 point 3 this is the version and the official website to download is https www. jetbrain this is the uh, this is the organization uh, which was provided this editor when it comes to visual studio it was provided by microsoft but this pycharm was provided by jetbrains organization hence www.jetbrains.com/pycharms/download this is a, a website you just go and check that i'm just uh, opening it right now selecting this and opening into my browser let's see like how it is looks like and what are all the libraries it is providing right now So when i navigate to that website it is giving me the uh, latest version of the spycharm so it is coming in different versions of professional and community and it is also giving a binary setup for windows mac os and linux platforms based on your availability and based on your current system configuration you just select that particular platform and download it so again when you download it here so it is going to download and as i already downloaded because it is taking much time it seems so this looks like this is coming as again in an exe so when i download for windows it is coming this way and when you double click on it it is going to install it so again this will not take much time also you can see all other documentations and you know the solutions everything is available in this official website so going back here when i type here pycharm the installation it is displaying as like this when you open it 
again it is displaying how visual studio code was displayed previously but it takes some time to initialize and you know the start the internal plugins part but it's not so much faster compared to visual studio coder visual studio coder default is so fast so i think uh, pycharm uh, as i said pycharm uh, was introduced by jet prince uh, and it is having similar features of visual studio coder as well look at here the <clears throat> the opening time generally <clears throat> like uh, as i opened previously uh, visual studio code it was so much faster as compared to pycharm it is extremely lightweight and uh, you know the uh, all libraries were by default integrated hence it is extremely having lightweight compared to pycharm so when it comes to modular approach of writing a code so visual studio code was um, much more faster and much more convenient for every developer hence it is uh, ruling the market compared to other editors so looks like see here it is initializing python project by default because pycharm generally using it for python developers but visual studio code was using for different languages that means no need to you know initialize all this stuff in the visual studio code so again it looks like same editor and you go and check it and all options are similar but it has some different options so it look, looks look, looks like here git uh, another option was provided so where it has uh, git related options here like uh you know the initializing repository and sync your repository it has some options pull and push and fetch operations etc etc so this is this is how it looks like so pycharm so uh, i cannot say like you know uh, which editor is best here because both are very good so they have their advantages and uh, disadvantages so i am hesitant to state like hex is better than y kind of stuff so all all editors are very good based on your you know the interest you go and uh, see it here so if you look at here this is also giving some left panel here this is the basic python project i have created i think yesterday it is opening here in this part and this is file it is creating by default it is creating it seems this is what the editor coming right now and also it is giving external libraries folder here that means you go and see like what are all the libraries are available in python so as everyone is saying it support use community and you go you go and see here these are the libraries so all these libraries so in visual studio code so it doesn't display all these libraries uh, because you go and see in visual studio coder also there is a command here uh, when i see like new terminal so this is where my command prompt this is visual studio code when i say python and ls this is the list command it is going to display python files but there is an uh, there is another command called pip pip is nothing but it's a command where you uh, uh, want to install a package or library you need to use pip command if your python version was before 3.0 version you need to install pip package separately as like python but as we are using latest python version it is coming as part of python when i say pip ls it is going to display what are all the libraries already installed in the system it give you the all list of libraries and packages installed in this maybe ls is unix command i think you need to verify it in bash or unix or linux ubuntu system so here list pip list means it is going to uh, list out all the uh, you know the packages available and the version which got installed in your local system so these are all, all libraries have installed it this way i can see in visual studio code when it comes to here by default it display what are all the default libraries available in python and what are all the files uh, source code files of that particular library and you can see everything here okay this is something different okay just close it here also if you want to write a python program this 
print. So this is just giving syntax and also it tells about the syntax and intelligence feature as well. Let us say hello. Display. So it is giving different you know, format of you know, the syntax here. I mean, different format of uh, the intelligence feature here. Then it comes to here. Um, what it is doing is by default, it is displaying here itself. And I say print, it is displaying here itself. Like what is the syntax of this? Something here in a you know, broader way. But when it comes to here, it is giving something like this here. So basically both edits are very good. It's all depends on the user experience and user interest. They go and install it and they can start writing a program. So as I said, PyCharm only using it for Python. So because it only develops for Python developers. So when it comes to Visual Studio Coder, you can use it for uh, any programming language. Okay. So PyCharm and Visual Studio, uh, both are you know using it for development. So designed to make it easier for users to write. So PyCharm specialized for Python programming, while Visual Studio Coder is a development tool specialized for uh, any language, but especially .NET development they're using because basically belongs to Microsoft. Okay. So now going apart, third one is Eclipse. So this is again one more tool. And let's basically use it for Java development purpose. Uh, whoever is working for Selenium or a part of uh, writing JavaScript and Java, they are preferring this Eclipse editor. So both Eclipse and Visual Studio are good IDEs. Does they have their advantages and disadvantages again? Okay? So I cannot say like which one is better. So all are uh, coming as part of writing a program. So it is uh, having latest version was. I think uh, Eclipse Installer 2021. Six and the official website of this Eclipse software was download. Is https slash www dot eclipse 